Hello all, this is Umesh, History Faculty at Manifest IAS and as part of our current jobs initiative, uh, current jobs initiative, we have started a series on World Heritage Sites. As I have explained previously in my introductory session uh, on World Heritage Sites, these are some of the most important cultural sites of India and we have specifically categorized all these 38 sites into specifically categorize them into separate separate sections and as part of this we are going to have a discussion on cave architecture of India today and as part of this cave architecture of India a few sites have been selected by UNESCO as world heritage sites of India world heritage sites of India as part of this session we are going to discuss today about the cave architecture of India particularly the caves of Ajanta and Ellora today we are going to have a discussion on uh, Ajanta and Ellora caves and uh, later we are going to have a discussion in our next video Video on the caves of Elephanta and Bimbetka, which also have been recognized as world heritage sites. Now, if we have a look at these cave architectural styles, these are the earliest surviving structures of Indian history because all other elements are present in perishable items. In perishable items, whichever are present, they have perished, but these cave architectural styles, these are earliest, uh, earliest examples of. Uh, places of worship in India, earliest examples of places of worship in India and as part of this series we are going to discuss about some of the important caves of India and we are going to start with the Ajanta Caves. When it comes to the Ajanta Caves, these Ajanta Caves they have been constructed between the period of 2nd century BC to 6th century AD. 2nd century BC to 6th century AD. These Ajanta Caves they are present in the Western Ghat section of Maharashtra, Maharashtra and these are a a completely a set of 31 rock cut caves which are present and these rock cut caves they are made on a rock outcrop which is present near the river which is known as Vagoda river Vagoda river in Maharashtra and on this there is a rock outcrop and on this rock outcrop nearly 31 caves are made okay and these caves they are constructed predominantly during the period of one the Shatavana rule and the second one is Wakatak rule Shatavanas and Wakataks are the main contributors in construction of these caves during the Shatavana period and when it comes to the religious faith of these caves all of them are Buddhist in their inspiration during the Shatavana period the Hinayana phase of caves are present because the Shatavana queens they believed in Hinayana Buddhism then when it comes to the Wakata period most of the caves are built based on the Mahayana traditions Mahayana traditions and there are a total of 31 caves which are present here and when it comes to the features of cave architecture in India Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. First, we will have a look at what are the standard features of all the cave architectures which are present in India. When it comes to these cave architectural features, most of them are rock hollowed caves. Rock hollowed caves means they are etched from outside to inside. It means that they will find a rock, then they start carving the rock from outside to inside. That is what is called rock hollowed caves and they can be either single roomed or multi roomed. They can be of stupa, vihara or chetya kind. Chetya means a sacred spot, vihara means the monk's residence and stupa means means the place where Buddha's relics are placed or any of the holy places of Buddhism are known as which are associated with the relics of either Buddha or his followers is known as a stupa. So three kinds of uh, caves are present stupa, chaitya and vihara kind. They can be single storied or multi storied. We have examples many examples of multi storied caves too but we don't find them in Ajanta. In Elora we find the examples of three storied caves too. So these kind of things are present. We will have a discussion about them a little later. Then when it comes to the base plan of these caves I will just show the base plan of these caves one second the base they can be either rectangular this format or they can be upsidal okay upsidal is the elliptical format or they can be spherical too okay this format so three different shapes are present as part of this cave architecture the outlay will be of this kind they can be single storied or double storied they can be of a stupa chetya or vihara kind they can be single chambered or multi chambered multi chambered means see this is a one entrance gateway on one side you have this circular one on the, on the other side you can have a rectangular or upsidal planned okay this way it means that this is a multi chambered cave the entrance gateway is the same so this is how then all of these caves at these entrances at these entrances they are 
ornamented very richly which are known as facades facade is the ornamented facade ornamented entrance gateway there will be huge windows which are present on these ornamented facades which are known as chandra shalas this is very very important and it is also found in ajanta caves then apart from that at the entrance gateway along with the facade there are pillared porticos and verandas this is one prominent feature every every cave has a pillared portico some of them they might not have but most of the caves they have pillared porticos they are very richly ornamented with pillars which are very uh, richly sculpted richly sculpted um, things then apart from that we have a barrel vaulted roof barrel vaulted roof i'll show you the barrel vaulted roof and at one corner of the stoop of these caves you have the stupa okay either here or here or here i'll show these images also to you so just let's just have a look at what are the barrel, barrel vaulted roof this is a barrel vaulted roof it looks like a hut mat a hut mat is a barrel vaulted roof it is not either flat or it is not completely curved like a dome it is a barrel vaulted roof which is a curved structure see here you can see this is a barrel vaulted roof here at the corner we can once again i'll point them out to you so that it will be help your understanding of the same see these things you can actually directly visit this sites and also find them see here at one corner you have this stupa and there are pillars on the edges then this is an upsidal plan this is a typical upsidal plan here you have barrel vaulted roof then apart from that you have a pillared portico here very clearly you can see yes or no then apart from that this is the chandra shala which is present this is the big window which is present on the cave entrance facade see the how richly the in, entrance archway is designed this is how the caves are typically designed okay this is how the caves are typically designed and as part of ajanta also all the caves are fitting into one or the other of this pattern so we have very clearly discussed what are the features when you visit the place also you can see all these features which are very prominently present in these okay what you have to have a look out for the base plan is what then how is the internal architecture present what are the pillars how are they designed what are the sculptures all of these things we have discussed now we are going to move to the next section as part of ajanta which is known as the cave paintings ajanta is world famous for its cave paintings because they are the best representation of indian painting tradition indian painting tradition in its classical format is shown in the ajanta caves shown in the ajanta caves it provides as the best specimens of ancient indian painting because the technique is very advanced when compared to the times then apart from being technique being advanced the themes which have been chosen then apart from that apart from the themes the human body we how it is represented all of these things are very very important with respect to ajanta caves so let's have a look at how these paintings are represented just we'll move to the next image see where are they present in these caves itself on the ceilings on the rooftop okay some of these uh, some of these images are present apart from the rooftops they are also present in they are also present on the walls of the cave apart from the roof tops the walls of the caves are, are also represented by these uh, images then apart from that the door frames the door frames all of these areas are richly painted and one unique element of these paintings is there is no clear demarcation from one scene to the other the scenes they flow from one to another there is a continuous flow of scenes there is no clear demarcation and most of the images they have very very thick outline okay the outline is a dark outline then inside the painting is done and most of the pigments which are used are natural pigments it is a wonder how these pigments natural pigments which are made from natural dyes and minerals survived for so long survived for so long they are made in the format of a fresco they are made in the format of a fresco wherein uh, the uh, they are made in the format of a fresco which is fresco means a wall painting a wall painting and here on a dried surface these paintings are made right surface these paintings are made so this is very one very very important thing and when it comes to the technique of painting here the painters are uh, very much interested in showing three dimensional images in a two dimensional format okay because the wall is a two dimensional format they wanted to represent three dimensional images on these two dimensional walls and for this reason they employed some techniques some typical techniques of painting which are known as shading and highlighting wherein the images which are present in the forefront they are shown in bright hues or bright colors which are present in the background they are shown in darker colors which means which shows that there is a sense of depth okay human eye also perceives the same way the images same way then apart from that they also employed the technique of foreshortening wherein the images which are present in the forefront they are shown in larger size as the images go into the background they become smaller and smaller in size that is known as foreshortening then apart from that they also um, employed techniques like uh, the image of the uh, the size of the image is based on the 
significance of the image see here in this image i can very clearly show see here the buddha is shown in enormous proportion okay when compared to all other beings who are present here okay this is in fact the image of buddha begging from his own wife yashodara and his son is also represented here rahula they are very short in size whereas buddha is very huge composition then apart from that you have the halo technique wherein uh, the buddha who is a sacred being has a halo around him a halo around him so all of these things are uh, helping in a creation of illusion of depth in these paintings illusion of depth in these paintings so all of these points are present in uh, these things and uh, uh, present in this slide you can have a look at the, the slides too then apart from this uh, uh, when it comes to what are the themes which are selected themes which are selected is they try to depict the ancient indian life completely in the complete panorama panorama means what they try to do they choose themes like number one is a forest life then apart from that the life of a prince the life of a common man the life of a sage all of these lives are represented very very clearly in these images so the entire ancient indian life we can see in this enormous compositions which are present on these walls okay one will be completely awestruck when one goes to these ajanta caves they are one of the brilliant contains one of the brilliant painting traditions of ancient india then apart from this if you have a look at the images see the human form is represented in its best form all of the images are slender it means very thin this is typical indian body type they are slender they are well proportioned they are elongated see the arched eyebrows which are present and all the images are very well ornamented ornamented with their headgear with their Uh, with their necklaces with their ornaments everything you, uh, everything and different types of hairstyles are also shown in these images there are so many beautiful images this is the image of uh, padma pani okay who is the most prominent bodhisattva in mahayana buddhism this is the image of padma pani and he is a very very prominent bodhisattva see look at his compassionate eyes which are lo looking at the ground looking at the ground or looking at the people so he is the representation of compassion of buddha compassion of buddha so this is one prominent image which we talk about usually when we speak about uh, the uh, he, the images of of uh, ajanta okay he is very very prominent then apart from this if you have a look at see this is also one more image this is uh, the scene of a royal palace okay royal palace the king before consecration the king before consecration see his uh, attendees are also present then apart from that uh, the king is sitting here then apart from that the princess are looking from the side from the side so all of these things you see the kind of depth that is created automatically one feels because of these pillars because of the sizes of the images because of the illusion of ima of um, this uh, lighting and shading the images on the foreground are different and in the background they are different so this is how the technique has been employed the technique has been employed and most of the themes here are jataka tales stories the stories of jataka tales which talk about the previous lives of buddha so all of these things are represented in ajanta paintings so we have looked at the architectural style the painting style of ajanta caves and apart from that where they are present on wakoda river then there are a total of 31 caves which are present in ajanta so this is the discussion about the ajanta painting tradition next we will move to ellora okay when next we will move to ellora ellora caves which are present in maharashtra when it comes to uh, the ellora caves too they are also similar in their Uh, when it comes to the architecture when it comes to the architecture the caves are exactly similar all the features of cave architecture which are we have spoken about in ajanta they are equally applicable to ellora too and these uh, ellora caves they are present in this chandradri hills chandradri hills they are also carved on a rock outcrop which is present there and there are a total of 34 monasteries which are present here 34 monasteries which are present here and they are called carved on a basalt cliff carved on a basalt cliff and when it comes to these uh, uh, these uh, caves they are built between 200 bc to 1000 ad okay nearly for 8 and 1200 years the construction activity went on in this region they are the construction activity went on longer than ajanta caves because an ellora caves apart from the shatavahanas the wakataks even the rashtrakutas constructed a lot of temples in this in this region and ellora cave it is also representation of the tolerance of the tolerance of ancient india 
they contain the images of buddhism jainism and along with buddhism and jainism there are also images or caves of hinduism too here we have given the number 17 of Buddh uh, hindu temples and apart from that five jaina temples along with the 12 buddhist caves are present here so a total of nearly 34 monasteries are present and when it comes to these they are also of chaitya or vihara kind even jaina basadis basadi means the resting place of monks in jainism is known as basadi jaina basadis buddhist viharas buddhist chaityas buddhist stupas are also present and hindu temples are also present so that is how Aj elora is different from ajanta ajanta is a typically buddhist in inspiration whereas elora is buddhist hindu and jaina influence all of these things are present here then when it comes to the images the cave architecture is more or less the same same the same barrel vaulted roof pillars in the edges uh, a stupa in the corner this is also a, a upside structure all of these features are common common then when it comes to elora what we have to have a lookout for is the various sculptures which are present in elora there are some very very significant sculptures and upsc has this habit of matching the sculptures with the location where they are present so that is the reason why i have given a list of all the sculptures which are present in the elora caves because the features are common the periodization is common the uh, the builders i told you that rashtrakuta has got added to it so here when it comes to the sculptures of this center the most important sculpture are Ravana shaking Mount Kailasha okay Ravana shaking Mount Kailasha is one of the most prominent uh, image which is present it is represented twice one in a Ravanka Kai cave the second one is in a Kailashnath temple itself then apart from that you have the sculpted panel of Durga Mahishasura Mardini then apart from that you have the Shiva in Andhakasura Vadha format then Saptamatrikas are also represented seven divine mothers this is a typical icon of Hindu temples most of the Hindu temples if you search for search them you find the image of Saptamatrikas or seven mothers who are different formats of Parvati Parvati then apart from that you have the Nataraja image also so and one prominent cave here is Ravanka Kai is one prominent image and here these are the various icons which are present in these cave structures and temples which are present in uh, Elora and Elora is more prominent for one more thing which is associated with Elora that is the Kailashnath temple the Kailashnath temple it represents the climax of cave architecture see this is a freestanding temple but we call it as a climax of cave architecture why are we calling it climax of cave architecture is because the technique used here is similar to the cave architecture construction style here rather than hollowing out the images from outside to inside what they did was they carved an entire big stone into a temple big stone into a temple because the construction technique is same we classify this Kailasnath temple even though it is a freestanding temple as a part of cave architecture of ancient India see the brilliance of it then apart from this this Kailasnath temple it is considered to be a wonder of human genius why because the cave the entire temple is carved out of a single rock even a single mistake will cost them uh, or will lead to the entire reconstruction of the entire temple this is this is the Kailasnath temple for you now we will have a look at what are the features of this Kailasnath temple we will have a look at this temple is constructed during the period of Rashtrakutas and the Rashtrakuta temple uh, Rashtrakuta Krishna when he started or he is the one who commissioned this temple and this temple it has the features of both Virupaksh temple which is present at Patanakal okay then apart from the Virupaksh temple it is significantly influenced by the Kailasnath temple which is present at Kanchi so both of these temples influence the architectural style of this uh, uh, temple and the typical outlay of the temple we are going to discuss Dravidian architecture later but the typical outlay of this temple is Dravidian in outlook the entire temple structure it is basically constructed in a Dravidian format when it comes to this temple this temple is an enormous composition an enormous composition and it has all the typical Dravidian features like it has Gopurams as the entrance gateways then apart from Gopurams it has a huge Vimana on uh, on the central shrine then apart from this numerous mandapas are present then apart from that prakara wall kind of structure is also present then apart from that you also see dwajas tambans which are part of this uh, temple structure here you can see the dwajas tambans too one second i'll uh, mark them out for you so that it will be easier for you to understand one second okay uh, when it comes to this uh, temple structures here you can see yes one second here you can see this is the Dwaja Stambam, this is the Shikara of the temple, Vimana and Shikara. Then this is the Gopuram, these are the hallways which are known as Mandapas. All of these things are present in, as part of this temple. Then when it comes to uh, these uh, temples, here you can see that uh, there are this uh, temple is completely entirely richly ornamented, richly ornamented and when you enter the temple from the Gopuram, okay, see this uh, first thing that you will see is uh, this uh, 
this pillared portico kind of structure pillared portico kind of structure which is present on the edges of the hill the edges of the hill this pillared portico structure is present then if you look at the entire temple is built on a raised platform and the platform's pillars are made in the format of elephants elephant images there are numerous freestanding images too which are present here and this structure which is a u shaped structure the outside pillared portico is connected to the central shrines earlier through a hanging gateway hanging um, hanging bridges hanging bridges of which are made of stone right now these hanging bridges they are fallen off we don't see this hanging bridges then apart from this if you see have a look at if you have a look at the temple structure uh, the columned arcades are present then flying bridges were originally present as i pointed out just now and here in this temple both shaivite and vaishnavite influences are very clearly seen most of the sculpted panels there belong to either shaivite or vaishnavite uh, vaishnavite bhakti movement so this is the kind of a temple okay now we'll uh, discuss with image see uh, this is the Kailasana temple for you okay here you can see that i'll show you i'll mark uh, various features of this temple one second Okay, the, this is the mandapa which is present, the mandapa which is present and this mandapa it has and apart from that see freestanding sculptures, this is the Dvajastamba, this is also a mandapa, this is the gopra which is present, you can see it there, entrance gateway, this U-shaped structure will come, then apart from that the pillared verandas are present on these edges, then uh, after this I will show you one more image one more image of the Kailashna temple see this is the frontal image the frontal image this is how it looks then apart from this this is the pillared portico and which is present associated with the temple then the elephant bases you see then apart from this the sculpted panels which are present here in this temple also we are having a look at so this is Ravana moving Mount Kailasha this is Ravana this is Shiva Parvati all of them are represented this is a very famous image then apart from Ravana moving Mount Kailasha this is the image of one second this is the image of Nataraja, Lord Nataraja in dancing format, in stone format and this is the image of Andhakasaravada, Andhakasaravada of uh, Shiva. So this is a basically Shaivite school and apart from this uh, numerous panels are present which represent the stories of Ramayana and Mahabharata also are present in Kailasana temple and it is definitely an architectural wonder completely built in a Dravidian style and this finishes the discussion on Ellora. In Ellora the caves are similar to the Ajanta caves but the uh, temple which is present here which is known as the Kailasana temple is more prominent if you have if you visit ever Ajanta or Ellora you can find all these features present there all these features present there so this finishes the lecture on the cave architecture the first lecture on cave architecture the second lecture we are going to take it up in our next session thank you